Hi guys, Lindsay here with Storybook Family Farm. So I want to share with you guys a little bit of a kind of a kind of a comical um, thing that's been happening with this house um, since we got this place because it was such a huge long list of basically everything needed renovated in the house. It needed completely redone. A bunch of stuff on the outside needed redone. Um, it was abandoned for several years before we bought it, almost a year and a half ago. So there was trash piles everywhere and just everything was super neglected. So if you've been following me for a while, I've pretty much discussed all of the stuff, which there's a small trash pile there. So don't tell me about it in the comments. I'm going to clean it up eventually. It's just been dumpster after dumpster after dumpster worth of things that we've had to haul out of here. So some stuff gets left behind. Um, but actually it's not that it got left behind the, having the ducks and the geese and the turkeys and the chickens free range, they keep finding more trash. So as we walk around the woods and stuff, like I keep finding new things that need picked up. So as I, as I find them, I peg them up anyways. So how I've been able to keep on track with what to focus on next has been, I've actually been asking the universe to sort of just give me guidance to show me what needs done next. Um, which Sometimes, you know, it's just a faint whisper of I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh my God, I need to start focusing on this because this really needs done. Sometimes it's like that. Other times it's like, I can't take this anymore. I just, I got to fix this thing. Like it just, I'm tired of living like this and I just get frustrated. And then I just, that's where I start focusing on. Other times it's Tracy falling through the front steps or our daughter falling through the front steps, two different spots, same steps, two different spots. Um, you know, sometimes it's really catastrophic things breaking. This week, as I started finishing up building the cupboard doors for the kitchen, which once I get the knobs put on, I'm definitely going to have to show you guys because I'm really jazzed about this, how this project turned out. Um, this week, as I started finishing that up, which I just hung the last couple cupboard doors today because I didn't have enough screws yesterday to finish it then, um, I started asking again for guidance on where to focus my energy, where to focus um, basically our dollar at, and where to just have us focus in on. And wouldn't you know it, on Friday, pretty much a catastrophe had happened. It's kind of like how, you know, I grew up in church, so I used to hear people all the time be like, don't ever pray for, for wisdom. Don't ever pray for patience, because then it's almost like a cruel joke, because then your life gets twist turned upside down, and you have no choice but to learn how to be more patient, because just everything gets really incredibly difficult. So apparently you should not ask the universe for signs and guidance on how to renovate your house next and where to focus next. Because Friday it was 94 degrees out with a real fill of 104, which is ridiculously hot for Ohio. Um, and it was also a baking day. So I had to bake in the house for several hours to get ready for the farmer's market on Saturday. So it was a really hot day. It was really hot inside. The kitchen got up to like 84 or something like that while I was baking. And while I was, when I finally finished baking, I was like, oh, thank God, I'm going to go sit in the living room where the air conditioner is way stronger in there. And it's always much cooler because obviously farther away from the oven. So I go walk in the living room and there's this huge pile of water on the floor. And I immediately looked at the dogs and I was like, why? Why did you pee? Like, I was so mad. And then I realized that the water was actually purging out of the mini split, which is how we cool our house. It is like a, a big wall unit. It's a heat and, er, heat and cool pump type thing. So it's very energy efficient. We've had this thing for forever. It's moved to several different properties with us because um, we just remove it from the wall and take it with us. Um, and it basically was spraying water out of it like it looked like one of them really pretty waterfall features that people have um except for it was not supposed to be um everywhere where the air the cold air is supposed to come out was basically just dripping water all over the place so tracy's chair that was underneath of there was completely drenched the floor was so wet i had to get a beach towel out and like it sopped up all of it like the beach towel was nastily wet um, and I actually probably will have to replace some of the paneling that is underneath of the mini split because it had been pouring water out for, I don't know how many loaves of bread worth of baking because I didn't leave the kitchen. So yeah, it's kind of evident that that's something that we really need to focus on, which, you know, if you guys haven't been following our journey for a while, when we bought this house a year and a half ago, there was not a source of heat in it. Um, so last year we heated our house completely with firewood, which was all wood that we found in the woods here, um, which was really insane trying to, looking back on all we did in a year is kind of, kind of crazy that I'm still like here to tell about it and, you know, still smiling too. So it's kind of, 
kind of wild. We've been through a, a lot. But um, so we've been trying to figure out where to spend some of the money that we have saved up for our next projects on what is the most important thing. And we've gone back and forth about trying to figure out what type of heating we should put into the house because it's not sustainable for us um, to continue to just solely heat with wood because it makes it very difficult for any sort of finding homeowners insurance um, or anything of the sort like that. And it just really ties us up for future endeavors if we don't have an actual modern heat source. So we've been talking about maybe we should try to do that this year instead of like waiting for income tax return time. That Maybe we should try to stretch ourselves to focus on that kind of soon. But we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of like holding ourselves back and kind of like, yeah, I don't know. So, you know, then me being the wise, intelligent being that I am was like, hey, universe, can you give us a sign? Give us some guidance on what we should focus on next. And then waterfall feature in the living room kind of kind of pointed us in a certain direction. So now we are going to be starting on the endeavor of basically doing a bunch of research because we could get a bigger mini split for in our house um, because the mini split we have right now, it actually is rated for, I think it's a one ton unit. So I think it's rated for like 700 square feet or something. And our house is around a thousand. So it can cool a lot of the downstairs and make the whole downstairs area pretty comfortable. Um, but upstairs, it doesn't really do diddly for upstairs. So we could get another, a bigger mini split unit that is big enough that it can do the entire downstairs really effectively and potentially do better job of doing the upstairs. Um, we've also seen some of those mini splits that have a secondary indoor unit so that way we could put one upstairs and leave one downstairs um, and then the other option is to just get one of the like whole house heat and cool pump units but i have i have reservations about that because those sorts of heat and cool pump situations they only are rated to work down to like zero degrees fahrenheit which in ohio here it's not often that we get below zero but there is times in january that we'll get like a freak storm or whatever that it gets below zero which would make it so that way you know technically there wouldn't be a heat source for in the house so i'm not i'm not sure how that would work in terms of like if slash when we ever sell this property if that would still be considered like an actual legitimate working heat source because like a regular gas powered furnace or technically it'd have to be either electric or propane here because there's not natural gas available but um you know those sorts of furnaces they continue working even if it's like in the negative um, numbers and stuff so i'm not i'm not too sure as to how that works that's something that i've got to do a lot more research but i'm bringing this all up because if there is a viewer in here that knows about that sort of a thing, um, that knows better as to a direction to steer us in, I would greatly appreciate your advice in the comment section because even though we do, we are big fans of DIY stuff, there are some things that it just doesn't compute in our brains, kind of like the whole solar power thing. It just, I can't, can't grasp it. So I appreciate any help that you guys might have in this matter. But the moral of this story is be very, very, very th well thought out before you start asking for guidance on what to focus on next because it might be a very big costly expensive repair so just a forewarning on that so anyways thanks for watching have a good one guys